everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. As you know, I love that smokiness of the Lapsung tea. It's so good. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea or possibly a cup of coffee. Today we're going to be talking about Panasonic. It's been a while since we've talked about Panasonic. That's because there really hasn't been a lot going on over there. Well, we got some news in and a lot of you guys out there that have a horse in the race when it comes to Micro Four Thirds will really appreciate this because we've talked about Micro Four Thirds in the past and said, you know, they're dying out. That's just it. They're going to go away of the dodo bird or of the dinosaur, right? They're going away. They're not going to be around. And this news might show that Panasonic will be continuing down the GH5 line. So... Nakashita came out with the specs of a new camera coming out, a new Micro Four Thirds from Panasonic. But before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't went and downloaded my ebook as of yet, go check it out over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, 10 tips in making tack sharp images. There's something there for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a professional, a pro am, or an amateur and it is free. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash ebook. Also, if you haven't cleaned your sensors as of late, do it. There's no reason to clean up things in post-production because there's little spots all over your sky. I created a product about close to eight months ago now, I believe. It's called the Aurora Camera Care product. It is absolutely fantastic. It is a sensor as well as lens cleaning kit. It allows you to clean your sensors about five times. So it costs about $5 to clean your sensor in comparison to 100 to send them away. And it is absolutely easy. They come with wet swabs as well as dry swabs. You use the wet first, then you go over it with the dry and your sensor is perfectly clean. No fuss, no muss. You don't have to guess how much liquid to put onto your swab and whatnot. It is exact every single time. Anyways, Aurora Camera Care. Go check it out. You can go to jcristina.com. You can go to amazon.com. Pick it up through Prime. You can go to B&H Photo and Video. You can go to 100 plus mom and pop photography stores worldwide. You'll be able to find them. Once again, Aurora Camera Care. So, Panasonic and their new GH5 what? GH5 Mark II. Not a GH5S Mark II. A GH5 Mark II is supposedly what this is going to be called. Now, when I heard this, I was like, well, this is going to be really good. Like I said, for anyone that is in the mirrorless Micro Four Thirds camp, and they want a new mirrorless Micro Four Thirds camera, and Panasonic hasn't come out with nothing for quite some time, and they want something new. And a lot of the photographers, videographers that I used to shoot with on a regular basis on set, they would use GH5, GH5Ss for small production, small 30 second ad spots for TV commercials and whatnot. And then they just kind of got sick of the focus problem as well as not enough light and there was a bunch of issues. And they said, you know, we're gonna go and move into the Canon camp. And that's what they did. They ended up going with the C-Series. It just worked out easier for them, less problems in post-production and also easy for the talent on set. They didn't have to have these hot lights and there was a lot of issues, like I said, when it comes to autofocus, which we know has been a problem with Panasonic forever. Now, I looked at the specs here, the leak specs from Nakashita. Now they're usually right, okay? More times than not, the rumors that come out of Nakashita are correct. So I would say this is pretty good, pretty solid information. Obviously there's still rumors, the announcement isn't out yet, but what they did say was that this announcement is going to happen very soon. This was in bold, very soon. So we're going to see this GH5, Two, Mark II announcement in the very near future. Now, for the specs, comparing the GH5S to this GH5 Mark II, there's really not a big deal here. There's not a lot going on under the hood. Starting out with the sensor, they've upped the sensor from a 10 megapixel sensor, it was 10.28 to a 20 megapixel sensor, that is 20.33. Okay, we have a doubling in megapixels. Not bad, that's okay, don't mind that. 
When it comes to video, this is where a lot of you guys are using the GH5 is for video. And for video, nothing has changed. What I found odd was the specs show that the new camera was going to have 4K at 60p. Well, 4K at 60p is like last week, last year, five years ago. I don't know, it's forever ago. I would like to have seen 4K at 120p, minimal. You're shooting on a little sensor, okay? You shouldn't have a problem. You should be able to go up to 240 most likely at this point in 2021. That's my opinion. But at least 120p at 4K. But it's indicating it's only going to do 60p. And that's exactly what the GH5S did, was 60p at 4K. So I don't know what's going on with that. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but once again, these are rumors, it could change. But I would like to see if it does change at least 120p. I don't know about you guys. Now, the other thing that changed was a battery. Now they said that the new battery is going to be their DMW BLK22, whereas the old one was a BLF. 19. So chances are we're going to get a stronger battery. It might be a battery that lasts longer. Maybe you'll end up with more shots. So instead of doing, let's say, 400 shots, you can get 450, whatever. But we are seeing a battery change in this camera. Now, as far as the weight goes, the GH5S was coming in at 660 grams, whereas the new camera, the GH5 Mark II, is coming in at 647 grams. So you're talking about 13 grams less in weight with the new camera. Now, what did they do to save weight? I really don't know. Maybe the battery will be lighter, or maybe there's some components inside there that are lighter. We don't know but supposedly 13 grams lighter. Does it make a big deal? Big difference? Not really. Now, when it comes to price, you can pick up a GH5S right now for $1,797. This camera, the new camera coming out, is said to be coming in at $1,697. This is for the body. So you're looking at about $100 difference between the two cameras, the brand new one being $100 cheaper than the current GH5S. Now, does that mean when the new camera does get announced or it does come out, will the GH5S drop two, 300 bucks? I'm gonna guess it probably will. But for right now, just get an idea of pricing. Also, if you pick up a kit instead of the body by itself, the kit lens doesn't change. It'll still be that same 12 to 60 millimeter, which is odd. We're talking years down the road and the kit lens remains the same. The price difference is pretty substantial. It's about $300 difference, whereas the GH5S comes in at about $2,596, whereas this brand new camera, if you buy it as a kit, is $2,297. So 300 bucks cheaper if you buy the entire kit. So we're seeing that the GH5 Mark II, in general, right across the board, is going to be cheaper than the GH5S as of today, with kit lens or without, doesn't make a difference. Now, my thoughts on this as a Canon shooter, and you know I'm extremely critical with Canon, I am not a fanboy for any system. Um, my thoughts are that this feels very much so akin to what Canon did with their EOS M series, with their M50. When they put out the Canon EOS M50 Mark II, it was a slight iteration from the original. It, there was no innovation in here. There was nothing new. It was just slight little tweaks, little things, almost like a way to say, oh, here you go. There it is. Not much. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand it. It has been years now. You would think that if they were going to continue Panasonic, was going to continue with their Micro Four Thirds line, they would put some time into the release of their brand new Micro Four Thirds camera, their GH5 Mark II. But according to these specs, they haven't. They've put in a bigger sensor. That's it. I mean, is there going to be better stabilization? Is there going to be anything new, anything innovative? 
I don't know. It doesn't show in the specs, but who knows? Maybe they're going to throw something in there. I sure hope so. Because what Canon did with their EOS 50 Mark II just booted them out of the top position for mirrorless camera sales. For countless years, Canon was making the number one mirrorless camera on the market, and that was with their EOS M series. A lot of people didn't know that. They thought Sony had the number one mirrorless camera for all those years, and they didn't. It was Canon. And then when Canon just completely just whiffed it with the Canon EOS M50 Mark II, it was like, well, obviously we see the writing is on the wall. Canon doesn't care about this camera anymore. That's what it looks like. And I think the same thing will hold true here. If there's no innovation in this brand new camera, I think Panasonic people are going to look at it as like, Panasonic doesn't care about this camera anymore. They're probably going to nix the Micro Four Thirds line altogether. I mean, how else do you look at it? You know, we want to see in a Panasonic new camera, I don't care if it's full frame or if it's Micro Four Thirds, we want to see some type of dual pixel AF, some type of phase detection AF. They've been stuck on this contrast detect for so many years and everyone knows in the industry that it's bad. Is it good enough for stills? Yes, it is. It works out great for stills, but these cameras are not still cameras. These cameras are hybrids and they've been hybrids for, God, five, six, eight years now. All cameras are hybrids today. They are no longer a still camera and a video camera and you purchase whatever you need, you get both. And cameras are rated today more on their video capabilities than on their photo capabilities. Sad that it might be, or not, depends on which camp you're in, it is absolutely the case. And since it's the case, the camera manufacturers know that they have to really knock it out of the park when it comes to video. And if we don't see anything new and improved in the video in the Panasonic GH5 Mark II, then what does that say about the entire line, right? So we really need to see that. In my personal opinion, we need to see phase detect in this camera. And if we don't, I think that this is really going to fall on deaf ears. Just like I said at the beginning of this, I have colleagues of mine that went away from Panasonic, not because it is not a fantastic video device, because it is, because their autofocus is so abysmal. And of course, they wanted to go with larger sensors because of light issues and hot lights and a bunch of other stuff. But the majority of it had to do with AF and how AF was just horrible, horrible when it came to continuous coverage, continuous video. You just couldn't use it. They would have to throw it into manual and then pull focus during the capture. That's not great all the time. It's okay if you're shooting an episodic TV program, all right, and you have lockdown spots where you're going to be pulling focus. It's all right. I mean, I use Panasonic Eva 1s on some of the programming that I do, TV shows, right? But you can't use them with a autofocus lens, even though it's a five, $6,000 unit. Why? Because autofocus is abysmal. Even on their high-end EVA ones, they are video devices and they're horrible. We still pull focus. That's just the way it is. So I wanna know your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think that Panasonic is going to go down the exact same road that Canon did with their EOS M50 Mark II, where it'll be more of an iterative release, even after X number of years have went by? Or do you think that they're going to pull it through and add some innovation into this because we see that it does have a larger sensor in it? Are they going to do something special with that larger sensor? A lot of folks out there were saying, you know, the next camera that comes out from Panasonic as of today absolutely must shoot 8K. And they originally thought that it was going to be like a GH6. Well, now that we see that it's going to be a GH5 Mark II and not a GH6, maybe they're going to save 8K for the GH6 and then release that maybe in 2022. I don't know. Time is going by 
and people only wait so long. And like I've said before, there is many, at this point, many mirrorless, full frame cameras out there that are at that price range. $1,700 is not cheap for a micro four thirds, not for an APS-C, not for a full frame, for a micro four thirds. 1700 bucks is not cheap. And a lot of people that are shooting these cameras are now looking at it saying, you know, wow, I could pick up something from Nikon. I could pick up something from Canon. I could pick up something from Sony for the same price or even less and get a larger sensor. So like I've always said, Panasonic has probably the number one video device out there but they're not capitalizing on it because of their abysmal AF. So I'm hoping that maybe, just maybe, they will figure this out and go down that path, a path of phase detection, a combination of contrast and phase detection to be able to get AF correct. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think they're going to do? If you are a Panasonic shooter, right, I want to know your thoughts. Do you think that these specs are good enough for a GH5 Mark II? Do you think that they're weak? Do you think that this is going to be an innovative camera? Or do you think this will be an iterative camera? What do you think? And is this a camera that you would purchase and bring into your stable of cameras? Or is it something that you would just look over? I would like to know what your thoughts are. You know mine. You know how I feel about the whole Panasonic issue with autofocus. You know how I feel about Canon and their EOS M50 Mark II, which was a complete joke. As you know, on this channel, I call it as I see it, period. I'm not a fanboy. I do not pull for one team or the other because I personally don't care. I shoot with all kinds of cameras. I bring in Hasselblads when I need to do portraits. Right now, we're shooting on a Sony. On this side over here, we're shooting on a Canon. I really don't care. I'm agnostic. It doesn't matter what it is. When we're on set, we're using Reds. Sometimes we're using the Panasonic EVA 1. Sometimes we're using whatever. It doesn't make a difference to me. I don't care what camera it is. So I want to know your thoughts, your real thoughts. What do you think is going on with Panasonic? What do you think they're going to release? And do you think it's going to be good enough? And will you be someone to purchase it? Anyways, I hope you got something out of this, enjoyed it, and then just a little bit, maybe, hopefully, <laughs> you liked the commentary. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel if you haven't as of yet, and click this bell icon over here so when I go live, you will be notified of it, as well as if a new video comes out. And after we're done talking down here in the comment area below this video, head over to our creative Discord server at community.jcristina.com. Once again, community.jcristina.com. And if you want to contribute to the channel, just a little bit, a dollar, two dollars, whatever, click this little join button down here. You'll become a member of the channel. You can give a dollar or so, and I can give you perks for doing so. That would be much appreciated. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.